If you want a simple, easy to perform home exercise program that requires minimal equipment and about 30 minutes, stick around and check this video out. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Nick Helton and I'm a physical therapist. I've got an entire playlist of videos that involve upper body, lower body, full body, mobility routines. Today I'm gonna make a home exercise workout plan that you can perform in the comfort of your own home with minimal equipment and that's only gonna take you about 30 minutes. If that's the kind of content that you're interested in, please drop a like on this video and I'll make some more of these or let me know what kind of video you'd like to see in the future. Here's a quick preview of the workout which involves an upper body, a lower body, and a spine or abdominal portion. To make it easier for you, I've also included a little timer bar at the bottom and in this video in particular, you can actually perform it with a partner, a friend, or a significant other. With that said, let's just start up the workout. All right, so today's workout is going to be an upper and lower mobility split. We're gonna start off with the movement prep phase. I'm gonna put all four phases up on the screen. But we're gonna start with the movement prep phase. We're gonna do a minute for each exercise without breaking. And then after that, we'll take a one minute break and jump into circuit A, B, and C. But what I want you to do is try and go through all the movement phase without breaking. It's designed to get you ready to move and it's more simple movements that shouldn't be as challenging. So let's just jump right into the workout. I'm gonna have her start the timer. We're gonna do a minute for each one of these exercises. Our first one is going to be done in sideline. All right, timer is going. So let's have you lie down there. We're gonna bend up both legs. Arms gonna reach out. We're gonna rotate to the side. We're just going for a minute on this one. The goal is to really try and move your upper back as much as you can. <sighs> try and keep your legs down. <sighs> if you need to, you can kind of cross your front leg. <sighs> That'll kind of prevent you from rolling too far. <sighs> and then press your bottom arm down into the ground. We're starting off on our left side for this first round. For the next round, just flip over and do your other side. We're gonna go through this circuit two times. Okay, now we're gonna switch into the prone scorpion. So, we'll be laying on the stomach, one knee's bent up. We're gonna rotate the leg and then all the way back. With this one, what I'm doing is just resting my head on my arms. Try to kick your legs straight back. Really try and rotate the lower body and the trunk. If this is too much, just go a little less range of motion and hold it for a second or two. This exercise is designed to get more rotation out of the spine and a little rotation out of the hips. And we're not going for speed here, we're just trying to move the legs as much as we can. Don't worry about how fast you're going. Okay, last one in this first circuit, so we're gonna do a pigeon stretch with our left leg. So we're gonna cross our left leg in front, gonna be up nice and tall, and then we're gonna lean in towards our knee. You should really feel this one on the left leg in the back of the hip. To make this harder, you can float your arms and try and come down and back up. That's definitely a lot more of a core and ab challenge to come down. Again, slow and controlled movements and really try and go as far as you can, as far as your flexibility will allow you to go on that left hip. Your back leg is nice and straight as well. To make that harder, you can kind of squeeze your right glute and straighten that right leg out. Okay, no rest. We're gonna jump right back into the foam roll or to the side lying extension, excuse me. Laying on the side, arm out, rotate. Now we're laying on our right side. For the first round, we were laying on our left. Just go ahead and do the opposite side that you did in the first round. Again, we're going through this for a full minute. You should see a little 
blue bar at the bottom of the screen that'll tell you how long to perform the exercise. Or you can just listen for the timer that I have in the video. Again, we're trying to rotate that upper back as far as you can. That bottom leg is pushing down into the ground. Bottom arm is pushing down into the ground. Just really make sure you get full upper back rotation. You can rest your head on the ground or you can lift it up. It doesn't really matter. All right, into the prone scorpion again for the second time. Knee bent up and rotate across the body. You might notice you can move one side a little easier than the other side. If that's the case, you can hold that for a second or two and really get a good stretch on that side that feels a little stiffer. Again, for this one, keep your upper body down. So really try and pin your shoulders down to the ground. That'll help you get a little bit more reach and more rotation without rolling over. We got 10 more seconds on this one. And then we're going back to the pigeon for the last time. All right, into pigeon. We did our left legs on the first one. So now we're going with our right legs. Right leg is crossed in front. Left leg is straight back. Again, trying to sink our chest down to the ground. Now I don't want you to just bend your low back. I want you to bring your whole body down. So just imagine you're doing a push-up with your legs with your leg crossed. This will help make it a little bit more even for that stretch as opposed to really just flexing and bending in your back. To make this one easier, just don't go as far. So just stay up a little higher and go a little less range of motion. If you want to make it a lot harder, take those arms off the ground, float down, come back up. Okay, now you take a one minute rest. So we're done with the movement prep round. I'm going to throw circuit A up on the screen. Circuit A is going to consist of three exercises. We've got an overhead press, a biceps curl, and a prone Superman. I'm actually going to have Carly demonstrate the overhead press with the resistance band because that way that can show you another movement that you can do at home. She's going to do it in a kneeling position. I'm going to use some weight. I'm going to use a barbell, but you can use any weight. So you can use a plate, you can use a dumbbell, you can use any small object you have at home. You're going to fill a backpack with some weight, press it overhead, a gallon of water, whatever. But just find some weight and let's do some overhead pressing for the next round. I'm going to bring in my barbell. I happen to have a barbell. You might not. That's okay. Okay, so she's doing the banded version of the overhead press. I'm going to demonstrate with the barbell. I'm just going to be in an upright kneeling position. We're going to get our barbell up. I'm just going back and forth. Again, use whatever you have at home. I'm in an upright kneeling position. I'm trying to keep my torso as tall as I can as I press. Now you can also do this one in a seated position. Carly's demonstrating the kneeling position. You can do what's called the Z press, which is where you're seated. You're pressing up and down. This is a bit more of a demand on the torso. Five more seconds. Perfect. Now we're gonna go into a biceps curl. Carly's gonna demonstrate the biceps curl with the weight. Start. Carly is using a weight. I'm going to use my barbell again just because I have it. Now this one particularly, you don't have to be in a kneeling position. 
I'm just staying in a kneeling position so you can see more so what I'm doing. But kneeling or standing works just fine here. I'm trying to minimize my torso swing, so I'm trying not to kind of go back and forth and really just throw my weight around. This can also be done with a band. If you have a light resistance band at home, just do some biceps curls with it. Good. Now we're going into the prone Superman. So I'm gonna have Carly demonstrate this one and then I'll jump into it in just a second. You're gonna lay flat on your stomach, arms are gonna be straight and you're gonna try and lift your arms up off the ground. So lift and hold, lift and hold. I'm gonna dive in and I'm gonna actually face towards the camera so you guys can kind of see my upper shoulders here. But what we're gonna do is lift off the ground. So try and lift and back down. Lift and back down. We want a little bit of upper, upper thoracic extension on this one. If this is too hard, just do one at a time. Lift one and back, one and back. And really try and get those arms straight. So straighten that arm as much as you can. Good. One minute rest and then we'll repeat that whole circuit again. Grab some water if you need it. So we're gonna run through circuit A one more time. Again, use any weight that you have, whether it's a small dumbbell, uh, resistance band, anything works here, just do the same movement. So for the overhead press, you know, use your band, use your weight. For the curl, use the band or the weight. It's the same thing. I'm just gonna get my weights in the proper position here. Okay, we're gonna go through all of circuit A for one more round, as soon as that timer goes. Okay, go. Again, I'm doing the overhead press here. I'm in an upright kneeling position. You can do this standing or seated. Seated is a little more challenging. It's a nice kind of challenge to the trunk. Kneeling is somewhere in between. And again, if you're tired, let's take a break. Let those arms down, take a rest, breathe, jump back in. The goal of this is to really extend those arms as high as you can. And depending on the weight or the resistance that you're using, that can be pretty challenging. Keep going, got five more seconds. Okay, into biceps curls now. Carly again is gonna use the weight. I'm gonna show you how to do it with the resistance band. So if you have a resistance band, just hold it down and do some curls. Pretty easy. Whew. Nice thing about a resistance band is you can make it as hard or as easy as you want to. If I were to go really close and slack it, this is almost no resistance. If I go pretty wide, grab the edges. Now I've got a lot more resistance. What I'd recommend if you're using a resistance band is to make sure there's tension as you start the movement. So if the tension doesn't start until the middle of the movement, you're not really getting a lot of resistance for what you're doing. You can also hold at the top, get a nice squeeze. All right, we got the prone supermans now. Carly's gonna demonstrate away from the camera. I'm gonna demonstrate towards the camera. Whew. All right, so arms are straight. We're gonna do one at a time or both at the same time, if we can. Whew. 
Now again, if that's too challenging for you, just go one at a time. The goal here is to really lift that shoulder up as high as you can and hold. So lift and hold, lift and hold. If you can, lift, and bo lift both and try and hold. See how long you can do it for. Ooh, okay. So that's the end of circuit A. We're gonna take a little rest. I'm gonna put circuit B up on the camera and I'm also going to adjust the camera angle so you guys can see me when we're standing. Okay, for circuit B, we're gonna have a goblet squat to start. We're then gonna do a suitcase deadlift and then we're gonna do a partner pal off press, which is basically taking a resistance band between two people. If you don't have a partner or someone to work on this with, just tie it to a door, attach it to something that is stable that isn't gonna move. Um, you can shut it into the crease of the door, that works as well. All right, so let's grab our weights for our goblet squat to start. All right, so I have a 35 pound plate or dumbbell here. She has just a plate. So goblet squat is just going to be here. So all I'm doing is holding the weight in front of me and going through a full range of motion squat. Now again with this, if you don't have this kind of weight at home, it doesn't really matter. Just grab something that weighs a couple pounds or just do air squats. You can do the same thing without any weight. You don't have to have the weight here in the front. It's the exact same thing. It's just a lot more challenging if you have the weight. If you do have the weight, hold it close to your body. If you hold it out here, it's gonna have a tendency to tilt you forward. Okay, now we're gonna do a suitcase deadlift, which is gonna be an asymmetric deadlift. I'm gonna hold my weight in my right hand. We're gonna go to the floor and come back up. Carly is gonna hold her weight so she can go lower, not like that. The goal here is to try and get as close to the floor as you can. You can kind of consider this more of an asymmetric squat, whatever you want to think of it as. I'm going to keep my weight in my right hand. And then for the next round, I'm going to switch over to my left. Again, if you don't have any weight, you can just hold any object that weighs a few pounds. A gallon of water works fine here. All right, now we're gonna do the partner pal off press. I'm gonna give her this band. She's gonna walk out, perfect. Go ahead and press. I'm gonna start off by holding. She's gonna do about five reps, and then I'm gonna do about five reps. And she's gonna hold close to her body for the first one. Now she's gonna do five. Now I'm gonna hold further away from my body. This makes it a lot more challenging. Good, now I'm gonna do five. Good, now she's gonna press, and as she presses, I'm gonna make it a little harder on her. I'm gonna move in all different directions. So I'm trying to knock her over. Now I'm gonna do five, and she's gonna do the same to me. The goal here is it's hard to know when the tension is coming. Okay, round one, take a break. So we got a one minute rest before we continue with the second round of round B. Again, goblet squat, suitcase deadlift, 
partner Paloff Press. For me, I was on the left side for the press. So what we're gonna do for the next round of the press is I'm gonna be on the right side. So I'm gonna be standing there, she's gonna be standing there. If you're just doing it by yourself and you're attaching it to a door or something like that, just flip to the other side. So face perpendicular to the other direction. Grab some water, walk around, we got 10 more seconds. Here we go, goblet squats to start. Remember the goal of the goblet squat is to keep your chest up nice and tall. Don't let the weight bend you forward. This is a big challenge on your trunk to try and stay upright. I find that holding a dumbbell like this in more of a Kind of wrist extended position is comfortable, but there's no wrong way to do it. I've seen some people hold them like this in the front. You can do that, it doesn't matter. I just prefer this position, I find it a little easier. As far as the squat goes, if you can't go full range of motion right now, that's okay. Just do as far as you can, come back up. Ideally, a full range of motion would be best. Okay, now we got our suitcase deadlift. I'm going in my left hand, so is Carly. And we're gonna try and come all the way down to the floor if we can. Same thing with this one. You wanna keep that posture in an upright position. Don't let the weight pull you forward. Your torso should stay as upright as possible. Not going for speed on these either. Take a break, slow it down and breathe for a second, and then jump back in. Keep breathing. We got one more, which is the partner pal off press. All right, Carly's gonna switch sides with me here. I'm over here, she's over there, she's going to start. Good. Now I'm going to do five. Five, good, now you go. For this round, I'm keeping my arms out. It's a little bit more challenging. Okay, now I'm going to try and Move her in all different directions. Make it harder on her. A little trick to this one is if you keep constant tension on the band, it's harder. Five. So instead of going no tension, full tension, keep constant tension on it. Five. What's gonna happen is if you let go of all the tension, the person's gonna wanna fall. Okay, break. <sighs> Grab some water. Take a breather. We are done with the weights. I'm just gonna adjust our camera angle again. That looks a little better. Okay, I'll put circuit C up on the board so you guys can see what we're doing for the next round. So we've got the inchworm, we've got the hip hinge press out, and then we have a push up to plank. So I'll go through those as we're working on them, but the inchworm is basically hands and knees trying to crawl back and forth. I'm gonna have Carly scoot her mat over just a little bit so we're better in frame. Yep, perfect. Yep. All right. Inchworm, both hands go on the ground, our feet are dug into the ground. Walk your hands back first. Now walk your hands forward. Now let's bring your feet to your hands. Whew. Oh yeah. Walk those feet all the way back. Now walk those hands. Whew. If 
if you don't have the flexibility, you're not going to be able to keep those arms or those legs straight. Excuse me. Keep your arms straight if you can. And with, th with this one as well, take a break. If you can't do the position with the arms down, just go onto your knees, take a little breather for a second, and then come on back. Now we're doing a kneeling hip hinge. So Carly's gonna grab a little weight over there as well. We're gonna be in a kneeling position. We're gonna hinge back and we're gonna press that weight out. The goal here is as we press out, we don't wanna let the body fall forward. So we're trying to press and maintain the same position. It looks easy, but it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> to make this harder, we do more of a vertical press. So we go up overhead, that's gonna be a lot more of a challenge to keep that torso in one place. You can also do one down and one up. To make that even harder, hold it. So come all the way out and hold that position. Let's set our weight down. And now we're going plank into push-up. So if you can't do a push-up, don't worry. Just go on your hands and knees. Carly's going to show you the hard version. I'll show you the easy version. So to start, hands and knees. We're going to go down to plank. We're going to come back up. Then we're going to do a push-up. So down to plank. Come back up. And we're going to do a push-up. Again, if that's too hard, just go on your knees. Push up, down to plank. Push up, down to plank. And you'll notice I'm talking a little less. This is becoming a little more challenging. Push up, down to plank. Up, and push up. All right, take a break. We have a one minute rest. While I catch my breath and get some water. This is the last round. So we have three more exercises and then you're all done. So for that, this last round, we really give it your all. Don't leave anything left in the tank. So inchworm, hip hinge, press out, push up the plank. I forgot to mention for the hip hinge press out, if you don't have a weight plate or something like that, again, just use any household item that has a little weight to it. And a resistance band can work there too. If you put the band wrap around your back and kind of press forward, it's just not the exact same as having a weight. Okay, let's get ready for inchworm. And here we go. those arms out as far as you can and then meet up with those arms with those legs I find that taking smaller steps is a little more difficult so if you want to make this more challenging take smaller steps this will stretch your calf you also get a little great toe extension which is a good thing for a lot of people. When we're doing these barefoot, I'd recommend being barefoot or at least having a barefoot shoe. Keep breathing. Arms are on fire. Yep. <laughs> Five seconds. Okay, now let's get into the hip hinge for the final round. Grab your weight, tall kneeling position, hinge forward and press out. Let's keep breathing. Again with this, if you're getting tired and you can't do the weight, just drop it. Sorry, that was pretty loud. <laughs> just drop it and do your pressing back and forth.
The goal of this is to maintain your posture in the same position. So if you find yourself really hunching forward, either go less range of motion or drop the weight. It's really easy when it's close to the body. It's quite challenging when it's further away. All right, roll that weight out of the way. Got everyone's favorite plank to push up. Well, let's get it started. So we'll start here, go down the plank, back up, and do a push up. Down the plank, back up, and do a push up. Down the plank, back up, and do a push up. Again, with this one, if you need to, go down to the hands and knees. And do your push up from there. Obviously, easier, but if you need more of a challenge, go to that full plank position. Make that a lot harder on yourself. It's the last exercise. We got 15 more seconds. Let's give it your all. Keep breathing. I'm definitely losing my breath. And that is it. Take a one minute rest, grab some water. Ooh, I'm still breathing. Ooh, all right. If you like that exercise, please drop a few comments below. Let me know how it went. Uh, feel free to drop some suggestions. I've been making a few of these mobility videos and people seem to enjoy them. So I've posted them on my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one.